Hey everyone and welcome back. In this quick tutorial we're going to walk through how to use the create tile set side scroller tool to generate seamless tile sets. Let's dive right into the interface. At the top we have options to set both an inner tile and a transition tile. These define the core textures and transition area between different types of terrain. You can use the set button to select tiles manually if you've already have some that you wish to, or you can just use the description area, which we have down below. By default, the inner tile is going to be rocks and the transition tile is going to be grass. You can be as detailed as you'd like. Feel free to experiment. Underneath the descriptions, we have the visual details which you can choose the outline, shading, style, and detail levels. These will affect how the tiles are rendered visually. Just play around with them and find out which one you like best. I'm going to keep it default for this tutorial. Next we have the tile size and transition size. The transition size here is set to roughly 0.5 tiles, which blends the two textures over half a tile. The tile size, so by default, is going to be 16 by 16. For this tutorial, we're going to use 32 by 32. Uh, with that in mind, the 0.5 uh, transition size is going to be roughly 16 pixels tall. You can define your color palette if you'd like, or you can let the generator uses its own colors then you can later reduce them down to a specific number or you can use your own palette again if you'd like in the advanced options we have the tile strength which basically tells the model how well the texture should tile seamlessly i normally keep it around eight or ten uh, seems the lower you go the more creative a texture you get the AI border freedom, basically this, the higher you go, the more creative the model gets along the lines of uh, detail for the transition. So the siding of the uh, texture itself and the upper is influenced on the border freedom. So I would play around with this and see what he liked best. I tend to keep it around the like 250 and 150 area. The tile set adherence, the higher you go with this, the more the transition side and surface aligns with the texture. The higher this is, the more your side is going to look like the initial texture. The lower you go, the more creative the textures on the transition side gets. So it won't be influenced by the initial texture as much. The guidance weight is pretty much influenced by the descriptions. And of course you can always find your previous generated seeds and use those. By default it's going to be set at zero for a random generation. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and start a generation. Matter of fact, we're going to do two of them real quick, then test out how they work together. Now that we have the generations complete, we're going to go ahead and do a quick little map.
let's use the extend map tool real quick to fix up any imperfections such as the seam of the two tiles colliding And also the two corners here could use a little touch up. With those, we can also generate a background and potentially extend our tile set further. To do this, I'm going to use the Create Image tool. Then the Create M to XL Image New under the Recommended tab for the description. I'm going to use just something simple like a RPG title screen with no font or UI, a distant fantasy kingdom and far mountains with a sky background. It's probably not going to generate all of it, however, the more you describe, the more detailed your image will get and it's best to have a good level of detail so that the model knows what you want so that you're not wasting generations. I'm going to keep the camera view on none and the direction on none so that it generates a, a flat image with depth depending on my description. This is better for the background images in my opinion. All right, now that we have it generated, we can put it on a bottom layer underneath our current tile set. Uh, depending on what you get, you can splice it up into pieces, then extend it further on that to have a longer parallax, or you can continue to extend it uh, through the sides or uh, the top or bottom of the canvas. Just remember to always select the tiles you have currently and or background so that the model knows what it's trying to mimic. So let's go ahead and switch back to the extend map tool and we're going to select both the background and the current tiles to extend the map further. Now that we have the map extended, we can further it by going into the end painting mode and draw masks on top with a description for the extend. This will regenerate that section that is drawn over and doing so you will be able to modify current tiles to fit your needs. Similar to how we did the fixes for the corners and the seam of the tiles at the very beginning. 
All right. I think that's everything from the tutorial. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.